Welcome, everybody. My name's Jonathan. My name is Mike. And I'm Bryce. Yeah, today, uh, this is the Virtual Cantina's Jed uh, Archives. I almost forgot our name there. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for joining us today, everyone. Uh, as you can see, we have a new member, Bryce, which is awesome. Uh, he's uh, Welcome, a Bryce. Thank you. expert in comic books. Tell us a little bit about yourself real quick. Been, been a Star Wars fan since I... I can remember uh, Return of the Jedi is my favorite movie. So we're, we're kindred spirits there, Jonathan and, yeah. and, and Mike. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm very pleased to have been part of the group, uh, the celebration group for uh, since 2019 um, when went to Chicago for celebration. So a lot of great, great advice, uh, great page. Uh, and I've been a, you know, a very big fan of it, especially during COVID. Uh, it's helped me get through a lot, so uh, it's awesome. And then about a year ago, um, kind of helped start a Star Wars comic book Facebook page, which is now over 500 members and growing exponentially because we just proved like 15 members in the last two days. So it's kind of cool getting some, some some cool traction there. So pretty pretty happy. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I just joined your group too, so that's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm a member. I love that group. <laughs> When you uh, joined the uh, celebration group, you said for the Chicago celebration, did you happen to catch first cello or is that, did you not really know what that was? Uh, no, I actually didn't. We, uh, my wife and I, cause we're only five and a half hours away from Chicago. Uh, we just kind of went on a whim more, more or less. We bought the tickets <laughs> and then we just planned, you know, our, our daughter would only been two at the time. So we didn't want to be gone for, for too long, you yeah. know, cause she's a handful, even at four now. Uh, so we just kind of went down for the, for the bulk of it. And, uh, it was just amazing. So, you, so amazing. Like, I still feel like Anaheim part one? of me is still in Chicago. Are you planning to come out to the Anaheim one? Oh yeah. Yeah. Already got everything taken care of. Uh, plan on flying in on Tuesday, uh, <laughs> ending the, the not so virtual cantina meetup on Tuesday yeah. and then nice. you know, the Wednesday, uh, boon to Eve events and hopefully Wednesday going to, uh, Disneyland and, and galaxy's edge. I got star Wars after, after dark tickets. So yeah, I'm, I'm locked in. I'm, I'm, you know, very hopeful that it's still going to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, it's definitely going to happen. I just, yeah, the capacity of how it's going to happen because Disney actually what they did, Never haven't done before. They did this time was they actually sent out the t physical tickets for the if you already purchased the Star Wars After Dark. So I just got my physical tickets, and I really doubt they're gonna want to postpone that again now that the physical tickets have been sent out. So yeah, I think uh they think it's it's gonna happen. Just it might happen at a lot of restrictions or something like that. So we'll just see how it happens. But I'm I'm okay with it. I really am. Just being around people and being in in, in the fandom is in any capacity is better than that. Yeah, it's pretty much uh, my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. So, because we're all Star Wars fans, so yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. So today we're going to talk about Star Wars: High Republic Adventures issue six. Mike, you take over the screen for us. Sure will. And as per usual, I like to go to the League of Comic Geeks.com page because I think they do a great job putting everything together. And here we have issue six and nice cover with uh, Barzala and Port. And I like the colors. That's plum and periwinkle. Yeah, it, looks, it complements their skin tones too a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the cover, Bryce? Becoming two of my favorite characters. So, very pleased that it's centered around them, and, and Quartz probably becoming my favorite in this series. I have to agree because Quartz, he's kind of peculiar because at the beginning, he never spoke. It just had like little symbols. I'm like, what is he speaking? And I, I figured out it's kind of like an alien language, but um, he's pretty interesting. Yeah. And then uh, I really like that, his face mask. And in this cover, you can really tell that it's a mask. Yes. His skin I, color yeah. behind it is kind of light blue. You told me, I thought it was his 
his skull. I'm like, no, that's his skull. Now, like, now I'm telling because, like, I look back and like, oh, they're, they are too talented. And, yes, because I thought the same thing. I thought he, I thought that was his head, and I would, I thought he looked like that character from uh, Star Trek. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The little, oh yeah, the one with the little eyes that have like little noodle eyes, yeah. <laughs> little crab eyes. <laughs> Scotty's. Uh... Scotty's yeah. assistant. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say Scotty's pet, but yeah, Scotty's assistant. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. But but yeah, now that I know it's a mask, um, he doesn't look like him. But I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. So really, uh, to me, once we finished this run before that, he was really just a sidekick background character. It was, it really, in my mind, he's he's like they could probably kill him off and we probably wouldn't even care that much. But uh, these next few issues, he really comes just to, own, to his own and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, he does. And this is one of the variant covers. That's a dope yeah. one. It sure is with a lightsaber. It's like a 3D cover. I like yeah. it. I wish we had the 3D glasses so we could see those yeah. lightsabers popping <laughs> out. Yeah, it's really cool. And this last variant cover... That's an interesting variant because I don't remember. Oh, yeah, tang was, yeah. Tangled up in the drain gear. Yeah. Wait, this is the, hold on, this is the convention exclusive one? Yeah. I don't have that one? <laughs> yep. And just a side note, I, um, I uploaded these variant covers because uh, they weren't up. And so I had the pictures and I said, hey, let me upload this. So I'm getting some points there in uh, League of Comic Geeks. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so that's cool. You can do that. That's yeah. Cool. So if you have a variant cover that's not there, you um, click on this little plus right here, add. And so I added a bunch of these uh, variant covers. This is the main cover. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool about that one. I didn't know that was the existed that the uh, exclusive one, the one you just showed. It actually, it says convention only. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that existed, so I'm definitely gonna have to go out and get that one. And the. Uh, <laughs> It does say the introduction here that the mission to Bilbosa Part 1, as the galaxy prepares for its Republic Fair, Court and Farzala leave their Padawan friends to join in the efforts of the fight against the fearsome Drengir in this first issue of a two-part adventure. Writer Daniel Jose Older, best-selling author of Star Wars Last Shot, and artist Harvey Tolibau bring IDW into the High Republic, a massive publishing crossover spanning comics and prose. And I like that it has the characters that are featured. So Avar Chris, one of my favorites. Ishnar T. Kar Karatal. Mayarga, another favorite. I love yeah. that hut. Surrette, Kiev Trenis, Quart, Farzala Tarabal, Lula Talazola, and Tarek. These and characters are in this issue? I have to read this issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, we're going to review like this issue today. Marvel. Right? This looks like the Marvel one. Like, it does. It does. I like, my art? What? <laughs> what and then, uh, and there aren't very many community reviews, but there is this one that gave it five stars. I also give it five stars. I love these comics. But, you know, I love yeah, everything. Very good. So, yeah, this is a really good series. So, let's hop on over to the comic itself. Beautiful cover. And then here's a the actual introduction. The Nile are temporarily subdued, but a Padawan's work is never done. Farzal and Court join the crew of the vessel and travel to Nalhada for peace negotiations. But they must put their Jedi training to the test to preserve the peace and appease the huts. Mission to Bilbosa, part one. And I love that we have uh, Matthew McConaughey here. Oh, wait, that's not Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> that's Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, Court, I know they're Padawans, but doesn't Court look like a? He looks like a man, right? He looks like well, bro. that's something I'm not I was going to cover. Farzola. I was going to cover it pretty much is these next three, four issues they age up. So this is uh right here. They don't tell us really exactly where we are right here, but we do know right here it starts. We just separated from the group, the whole group, so we don't see uh, Lula. Or the other one, uh, they go on their own little mission. So this is, I'm assuming, is the same time as Valor. 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 Mm -hmm. Valor. Yeah. 
And yeah, so this, the is like, this could be, we could have a little bit of a time gap between when we last saw them and now. So that's what I'm assuming is kind of what's going on because uh, everybody seems a lot older, especially when you, we go back and see Lula and them. They look a lot older. Yeah, that's true. But I thought it was only like one year. Or is it um, more than a year? Species do age differently. We do know that in Star Wars, I'd say. A That's huge, true. Huge thing. Yeah. That is true. That is true. And so it starts out and they're having little flashbacks of the hollows they would watch uh, of this <gasps> great Jedi who's fighting the Sith. Uh, but I thought the Sith were like a thousand years ago. Right? So the Sith ended a thousand years ago, approximately, or 800 years ago at this point. 750, maybe? Uh, I never knew this stuff really ended. I just know they kind of disappeared. Well, that's what I meant. It could be a flashback to the old Republic era. Actually, I don't know if any of you guys remember. I don't know if you guys played it. This guy reminds me of Joe Lee Bimbo. Do you remember that guy from the old uh, Night Soul Republic? Yeah, he was an old guy, too. And I was like, that's who I thought of. So I was like, this looks like that guy. So... That's it right. might be because Disney's bringing in a lot of the, the. Well, well, they gave his name. They say Master Tal Bota, but I'm like, it looks like the same characters. It's pretty cool. But well, I mean, it, it might be the same character just with a different name. Maybe because Disney's they've been doing a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and then this this scene here, when when he pulls down the, the Star Cruiser, that reminded me of uh, of uh, Force and Leash. Yep. Yeah, Force Unleashed. That's right. Like, oh. All kinds of video game like references is pretty kind yeah. of Yeah. Cool. So it's cool. And here we see them when they were little younglings. So cute. And then we come right into the present moment when they're on the vessel and they're hiding out because they're being boarded by the Nile. What just happened? How do we get here? Oh, they're not being they don't know. Uh, they're not being boarded yet. They're just on a trip. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. I got yeah. confused with these guys. Yeah. They kind of look like they're 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 cramped. Yeah. yeah, this is the vessel, right? Yeah, the vessel. Yeah. Yeah. Got the the ox. Geode and Alfie. Yeah, that's all it is. Mm-hmm. I loved uh who is this three-eyed? He's the three-eyed um Jedi from uh O Oberact Man, yeah, Jedi one. Master. O B R A T U K Master Obra Obrat Ku. Obratuk. Yeah, it's in the top left. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, Obratuk. <sighs> oh, that's right. Because they're gonna go help out with the drain gear. But this guy, I think I remember reading too. This guy was like a, a thousand years old or something ridiculous like that too. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's trained many, many Padawan. Oh man, this has been happening a lot. I think my computer got COVID too. It's a few minutes, huh? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so there. So on the next uh, two pages, we have we're on Bilbosa Nalhada, and they're oh, that's a, Is that one of the first shots we get of the outside of the vessel? Yes, I do believe so. Yeah. Because I, I mean, we, it was in the book, but they don't really explain it too much, what it looks like, describe it. But uh, it looks like a mini uh, Star Cruiser, Star Destroyer. It's a it does. It triangle does. Triangle with the rockets in the back. That's what I really like about the comics is that they give you visuals for the novels. You know, when you read yeah. the books, you really can't visualize them. But when right. you read the comics, you're like, that's what it looks like. Well, yeah. I did, like, I have different visions of people, definitely. Like, uh, uh, Marshawn Rowe. When I when I hear him in the book, is not what he looks like in the comic. So it's sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, like Geo, they did give us the uh, some teasers on StarWars.com what he looked like. So I, I knew what he right. looked like. He's just a, kind of like the Stonehenge uh, blocks, but yeah, that was cool. So they show up on on Now Hutta. I love the nod to the. To the skiffs, it's definitely a hot thing to have skiffs. Yeah, yeah, looks good. And they can't wake up that old master. <laughs> yeah, because he they go into hibernation. 
Oh, is that why? Yeah. They, I don't know if it's on this particular one that they do, but um, I think uh, whether they're on the, on the planet that they're from or whether they're not, they can actually, uh, they could actually sleep for several, several centuries. I think it's in the upper, upper. Oh, right. yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He was supposed it's to be a negotiator, so it's hilarious. It's it's like a a, t- a cartoon from the nineties. Like he's he's wake up, he, oh, he's the one supposed to do it. He's fell asleep. All right, well, somebody else will do it. So Barzala steps up. Right. Yeah. And they're gonna go to the negotiations. So they got onto the skiff. This is where we're introduced to a new character, which we uh. We'll learn a lot more about later too, which is really cool. Yep. Ish Ishnar. Ishnar. Mm-hmm. So Ishnar meets them, and then I wonder if Star Wars at the end of their book should be a little glossary to help us pronounce them. Uh, any name that's new, they should help us pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, they should. Phonetically. Unless you hear them in the audiobooks. Yeah. We, we can use a High Republic glossary at this point. <laughs> and then Court speaking his language. He's got a lot of a lot of dialogue here, which I'm not sure what he's saying, but he's talking to uh, Geode. <coughs> and then a little affectionate moment with Geode. Back on the ship. And then it cuts away to back to the planet. And here yeah, we see the huts. Wait, is this Miagra right here? Let me see. I don't think this is Miagra. I think this is um, Scarabata, I believe is. Uh, oh, yeah, Scarabata, the hut. Miagra is the one with Avar Chris on the planet when they were fighting the, the drain year. But you know what? Oh, you know, I'm wondering. This is, yeah, this is Gabard. Garabda, and then it says he's joined with his sister Mayarga, and that's like the twins on uh, Book of Boba Fett, where there's yeah. a brother sister yeah. twins. So I wonder if these are just reminiscent of that, or if it's actually them, because they didn't give names on Book of Boba Fett. Uh, that would be... <laughs> so imagine yeah, we just, yeah, we just know what it's That'd be pretty meta. <laughs> That'd be dope, though, because uh, <laughs> you know they're doing with the comics. You just... It was episode issue 20 of that, the Star Wars one, where they went yeah. way back and they brought in... They connected Star everything, Wars. yes. Yeah, That'd I haven't read that one yet, but I saw what Mike yeah. had posted. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. names of the huts, the twins, yeah. and then it's up d and like, what? I know, because I just noticed it here. It says joined with my sister Mayarga to defeat the Drain Gear. So they would sell a lot more of these comics if they drop something like that. All of a sudden, this is the name. Yeah. The other thing I noticed the difference between the twins on the show and and here though is that the tattoos under the bottom lip aren't aren't present, but we're also 100, 200 years away from that that point in time, so they could have developed it. Yeah. Dude, that's cool. I like it. Yeah, because this came out way before Book of Boba Fett. So yeah, yeah. When I originally read it, we, I didn't make that connection. But now that I've seen that episode, I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. Tweet Pablo. Maybe you can get it done before they give him names. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like one of those ones they go back and do kind of like a Rex. It would be really cool like. for sure. Yeah. I will tweet them because I love tweeting them. <laughs> <laughs> and they respond and they like your tweets too, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, they're in this arena reminds me of like ancient rome you know the coliseum so this helps us place our timeline though a little bit more so this is with this is pretty much the end of the series of the marvel one at the same time because this is where keeve and avar are fighting with Myagra. pretty much right. finally finish off the drain gear because we right. still have some drain gear so we this is probably almost simultaneously then happening with Valor because we still have some Dragon Gear Valor too. Yeah, I think it is simultaneous, but yeah, that's right. So it's it's still way in the past. <sighs> and I love these galactic data files. Oh my goodness. Yes.
What did the Marvel comics have? Because uh, in the middle, did they have something like this? I can't remember. I don't know oh, if they wow. do. I think it's only the High Republic, the adventures. So this little data file we got here is why they say Avar and all of them are in it, my guy, just because they're right here. Well, they're not in the comic book. <laughs> <laughs> they were mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, they're here in the data file. So, and here are the statues. Great photos of the statues, though, because yeah. uh, they explain it in the book. So I kind of figure they're similar to this, but this is great. Like, I thought they were actually more like stones, like all beat up and falling apart. So this is like gold idols almost or ivory or something. So really cool. See, and I originally thought that they were the statues that Palpatine had in his going into his office. Mm. Because uh -oh. I know that when in the novelization or they mentioned somewhere that those were ancient Sith statues that he had. Uh, so I thought that those were the ones from uh, the planetarium or the you know the what is it called the the maxine station yeah yeah but it wasn't oh sorry Mike. go ahead no go ahead i was gonna say i mean the the uh the maxine station and then dranger homeworld wasn't this a a little bit of a nod to into the dark the claudia gray young adult novel too some of this stuff and the idols yeah oh it's all connected yeah. for sure yeah because uh, they're all part of, they're all canon, part of the same uh, Star Wars new canon. Uh, yeah. And I love the Maxine station because then that connected to the comics with um, Snoke. With Snoke, yeah. That he was, that's where he met with um, Ben while, yeah. while he was training. Yeah, him. you're right. It's pretty cool. So then we get back to the issue. And yeah. the ships don't... start firing on them. They, no one has any idea why. And then the uh, huts are kind of blaming our team right now. Right, but they're like, what's going on? Who's doing that? Matthew and, McConaughey. Oh, boy. <laughs> and here's a Rancor. Always love the Ooh, Rancors. Hey, I don't remember that. That's cool. And then on the vessel, we see that they've been boarded. And... They're going to take over, and they're like, ah, oh, there's just a Vinti in here, this rock. But they don't think he's anything to worry about. <laughs> right? Oh, that bottom panel. God! <laughs> the bottom, like, the rock's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, how did the rock get in the cockpit with me? Because <laughs> it just kind of shows up. So, And then... Uh they'll throw back to the Boba Fett stuff right now when my I was watching with my family and they're like Boba Fett says I guess this is a spoiler but hopefully you've watched the couple Boba Fett episodes he says uh, I want to write it and like people who don't know a lot about stars just watch the movies like write it I instantly went to these the comic was like, oh yeah I remember that my aggro and them they were all writing the Rancor yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember Chris Aver on the Rancor so and uh, that's the same thing I mentioned at the Zoom, that when we first saw that in the comic, we were all like, wow, that is sweet. Yeah. Um, so that's the same. They're going to have the same feeling when they see it, people who don't read the comics. Um, yes. It's just going to be amazing because, it, yeah. We got a little preview, which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a little spoiler, but still, it's cool. It's different to see it in a comic and then see it in live action. I guess they do write... Do they ride Rancors in the Force Unleash? The they field? do. They do. Yeah. Yeah, because they have those hooks that they put into their nose, remember? Yeah. Like the, heard, the reins. They're very uh, Avatar world. They're very like bright glowing, and they had like, paint on them. So they're like, it's a little out of Star Wars, but still Star Wars because of the Rancors. But <clears throat> it did look a little different. Yeah. So the vessel's been boarded. And then we see there's a drain gear. They're here too. So yeah, they're like, chasing and our main man Leox. This is like where we still see some drain gear. Still, uh, pretty much the last time we see them, I think. Honestly, yeah. I think they're such a cool villain. In my opinion, uh, I don't know if this. I know some people are kind of annoyed by them, but to me, especially when they first came out like, into the dark, and they were really scary and. 
almost impossible to defend. I think it was a lot for the writers to have all this going on. Oh, yeah. So I think maybe this is more of an intro. And then later on, when they're maybe after the Nihil threat, we're going to revisit these guys. Well, they really are. They're not really gone. Yeah. Because I don't know which comic I read. I think it was one of the uh, the comic space for on um, Ga- Galaxy's Edge, where they hear the plants. Do you remember that one, Bryce? You know which one I'm talking about. Are you talking about the the, the new one, Mike, about, about the Starship Cruiser? The no, not not the, the one about the Halcyon. No, not but the Halcyon. Was, okay. No, it was one of the comics on. Um, I think it was of Galaxy's Edge, hmm. and there was something about the plants. And the plants were like, they just gave a hint of a like tick, tick, tick. And when I read them, I'm like, wait a minute. I thought the Drenger were completely gone. And that was like the end of that issue. Was that the one that centered around like Han Solo and Chewbacca a little bit? Yes. Too? Yes. It yeah, it's Han been Solo. a while since I read that, but it's that's starting to starting to come back. It's been a while since I read that that one. Yeah, it's, it's an old one, right? I mean, not that old, but I, I mean it's you know, in terms of how many comics have come out since then, yeah, it would be I would consider it older for sure. Right, but do you remember that about the plants? Um, I do. Uh, they, vaguely, they just, but... It just hinted at it. I'm like, yeah. that's Dringer, but the Dringer were defeated. But I think the we haven't seen the last of them because they really don't know how to defeat them. Yeah, and I couldn't remember if there were Sarlax too involved with that because that kind of explained the, the, the baby Sarlax on, that you can see like at Doc Ondar's. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, yeah, it's been a while since I read it, but yeah, I vaguely re- recall because it was about. with Chewy, and they were the people were decorating them, right? I think that was the episode. The people were, were decorating. There were these decorations on the on the plants. Was it the Life Day comic? <laughs> oh, I haven't read that one. Frozen train gear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, and it reminded me of the haunted mansion for uh, Nightmare Before Christmas <laughs> when they have the the plants. They're like, Rah! it almost reminded me of the train gear. So here I they are. Enjoy these, this, both these panels because there's a lot of action going on and a lot of green, and uh, green always catches my eye. And I just really love this. This is where they're being chased by the Huts Syndicate or whatever they're actually called, and then the Drain Gear come and they actually start messing with the people chasing them. But Farzala, being the Jedi, doing the Jedi way, saves her. And this is where he really, we really build a bond with her, which is cool. Right. Later. Well, it's really clever to use green and red because they're visually stimulating colors together. Um, and it's Christmas, green and red. Really good color combo. So yeah, it's very stimulating. And uh, But there's a lot going on. Yeah. And I do like it. And the, the drawings are, I like these characters. They look really cool. Yeah, I really like the artwork for sure. Yeah. Well, I have questions about that when we hit issue eight. I'm sure you guys noticed something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, what is going on here? Yeah. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> My computer's on the fritz again. Here we go. So then the Jedi save, you know, they save all life. Yeah, they capture them. You can tell, uh, man, I already forgot that girl's name. The alien? Yeah, the one girl they said that she she's already, you can tell she's being uh, she's confused, conflicted, thankful, but no, she still has a job to do, which is arresting them. Because they still think, people on the planet, that the rest of their crew attack them. Yeah. Right. And then the Master Jedi is still sleeping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Snoring in the background. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, all the shots of the ship, though, the vests are still, like, from below, so I still haven't got a great shot of what it looks like over the top. Yeah, it reminds me, now, I think that it, the comic came out before the movie, but um, the ship from the Eternals, just from the overall, like, triangle. Oh, yes. Right. You're right. Yeah. You know, that's Disney, too, so... <laughs> Two birds with one stone. Yeah. Yeah, it is a cool ship. It reminded me of Tron, too, with the lights. Mm-hmm. The lighting. 
So yeah, at this point, uh, the ship has been fully taken over. They think they are uh, got all under control, but Alfie and Quartz are hiding somewhere in the ship. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, and Geo's still out there. Yeah. Geo's out there. I don't think they think Geo is a threat. They think Geo's a rock. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's why he was all, God, how did this rock get in the pilot seat? <laughs> I love how they use Geode and they don't use them too much because I know it would probably upset some people, but how they do use them when they do, I, oh, I love yeah. it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. I hope we get a Geode backstory at some point though. Cause it's so, it's so interesting. It keeps you enough. Like, like what John's saying, like they use it just enough, but, but some people want more. And yeah. so hopefully they give us that little bit more, but maybe as a side story that for the people that are interested. Like a one-off. Yeah. I just saw that they are uh, doing a one-off issue of they're having like a bake contest on the Starland. I don't know if you guys saw that issue. Oh, with, with buckets of blood. Yes. Yeah. So that would have a one-off issue of Gia. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. I agree. That would be cool. And you guys have finished the last book, the Body of Grace book. The, I have not. I'm no. still on the uh, oh my gosh then you're in for a treat because there's a lot of geode action in that one. Oh, really? spoiler, spoiler alert. Yeah. And it's really good. <laughs> so yeah, I want to learn more about the Vintians too. They're, I, they're awesome. I, I really wanted to read through it, but you, you, your reaction makes me think I want to wait till I have another book to read after. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to have that reaction just yet. Oh, uh, it's so good. good. I don't want to spoil it really, but like your reaction is like, I need more afterwards. So. Yeah. Well, we, we got what? The next book comes out February 1st. Shadow? Yes. Mordor or something like that? What's it called? It kind of, the cover looks like it's straight out of Lord of the Rings. I'll yeah. give you that. Yeah, the like two figures standing there, they're called. Glue yeah. Glue. Again. And so this is the end cliffhanger end for this issue. And we see that Farzalaz captured and bound oh, favorite part of the next comic yeah next issue any uh final thoughts on this issue guys i i really loved um you know that we we kind of see that we're tr we're still trying to work with the huts um and then in here you know the one thing i guess we we didn't mention is that the the crew that's on there was actually java's crew that took over the ship. Yeah. Uh, the one line that says Java doesn't want anybody left alive. And that's why they're searching the ship for everybody. And they kind of just leave geo alone, um, which is a huge mistake. Right. So right. You kind of see that Java is still the man, even, you know, 200 years prior to us, even knowing who he is, he's been dealing with Jedi for, for centuries. Mm -hmm. so, and not yeah. afraid. And I, I love exactly. that. That's when I read the next yep. issue when he, spoiler, when he pops up, I was like, Java's here too. I was like, that's so <laughs> cool. I was super excited about that. I wanted to like tell people, like, I don't want to spoil people, but uh, <laughs> nobody knows that really. If you're reading the books or anything, they don't really mention that also. This is the first right. thing to talk about. So it's really exciting. And it shows that even the huts don't get along. So I think we got a little bit of that in the Clone Wars and that's not getting along a lot, but uh, this is pretty cool that it shows that. You know what, in the Clone Wars, they did show how they're like a mob family. Yeah. And so the Huts are, they're, they're around and they're, they've always been like family oriented, but really, you know, spreading out their empire, the Hut empire. Yeah. Pretty cool. So yeah, I like, I like this issue a lot too. I like the episode. Love the artwork. I think the artwork is, is awesome. Yeah. Look at all this detail on this and the last panel here. Just so much detail in the drawings and the coloring, the shadings. I love it. Yeah. Well, see, that's what eventually we'll get to it. But like these comics, the adventures, some of the story felt like it might have been for little younger readers. But this art isn't more. This is more the uh, adult readers type of art. So mm -hmm. I think that's maybe why they had some conflict with the direction later on. So, uh, but I think they even, they, they write it later on, but uh, we'll, we'll get to those, but it is a little interesting that this art is very, is very detailed and I love it. And this is definitely my favorite. This is what I remember always growing up reading 
Marvel and DC, this the very high detailed art. So I love the colors. Throwing a lot of greens in there. <sighs> All right, guys. So that is our as we cover issue six. And uh, mm -hmm. stay tuned. Stay watch our channel. Please subscribe. We're gonna have issue seven out pretty soon too. All right. May the force be with you always. May the force be with you. <laughs>